these guys know you appreciate them helping us out. I always want to be so aware. I know we had, as I mentioned earlier, there's so many people that stuff behind the scenes on a regular basis. I know today, I think, somebody told me maybe Stephanie and Scott got called out to work at the last minute and had to run out from worship practice this morning, but then work to get back here to do what. I appreciate people like that, don't you? Just all kind of people that do that stuff. Um. As you can see, this is going to be just a little bit different today. And uh, this is one of my concerns was this is not about us, and this is certainly not about me. Uh, But there is power in testimony, and a lot of times in the Scripture teaches us that. And testimony is so important because it builds faith. That what God has done for us, He will do for you. Amen? And so that kind of story, come on, just give the Lord thanks. I feel His presence in here today. Um, we want to share some today, of course, some of our story and um, about the gift of a miracle. And we all know that Christmas is a season for miracles. And that's not just a, pardon me, that's not just a Hallmark slogan. I'm not slamming your movies, okay? I'm just saying that's not just a Hallmark slogan. That goes all the way back to Scripture. How many of you know the virgin birth is one of the foundations of our faith? And uh, that a baby could be born of a virgin. And so miracles are at the heart of what Christmas is. And, uh, in fact, we're going to operate with a little acronym I think they may put on the screens for us this morning for GIFT and kind of walk through that as we share some things. And uh, I, they'll, they'll put some of that up for us. But um, so, so it's at the heart of Christmas. Let, let me give just a little bit of background for those of you maybe that are, are new today and, and may not know the story. And, of course, we're still walking through some things today. There have been things that we didn't expect, even as we uh, sit here, and, of course, all this year. But uh, even as we sit here this morning, our son-in-law is in the hospital, and uh, we're praying for him. He's going to be all right, and uh, Pastor Tim and Katrina's son, and... uh, we're walking through our daughter with that. They've just been married six months and their first Christmas, and he's in the hospital. And how many of you know that stuff's hard? And uh, so we're we're walking with her through that. And, um, you know, so we're still walking through some things. And uh, But God is good, and God is faithful. And... Um, let me give you just a little background uh, for those of you that maybe are, are new today. Um, we've been very careful. God's helped us at the church. We we didn't. We may have some affected here and there. We didn't have an outbreak in the church, but um, right the end of October and the first of November, we both contracted coronavirus, and. Uh, Jennifer was able, like most people, to kind of stay at home and, and recover, and she was sick. And, uh, but for me, uh, it just kept getting worse. And I was on the last day of quarantine, but it wouldn't turn loose. And uh, there's no, we don't know any reason for that. And uh, these are stats from my doctor. He said, Mark, you know, we don't understand because I, I'm, you know, I, I really, I didn't have a history of breathing issues. We tried to be careful and do everything that we should do and use wisdom uh, within reason uh, and keep living, but within reason. And uh, you know, I exercise regularly. The, the the whole deal. There was there was you know really no reason other than it just got a hold of me, 
And uh, I do believe there's a spiritual dimension and a spiritual warfare to some of this stuff. And, um, and we may touch on some of that as we go along. We'll see. But um, I just, just kept getting worse. And so by the time I got to the hospital and they took good care of me at Corbin Hospital, and I'm very appreciative of the nurses and staff there. Uh, but my doctor said, Mark, you know, 95% of people can recover at home. Um, there's about 4% like you that um, have some complications and, uh, you know, 1% that, that doesn't make it. And, um, you know, the, there, there was no reason that, you know, when it was totally unexpected, that wasn't anything that I ever anticipated, and I'm still processing a lot of that. And uh, like I said, one of the things about coronavirus, you come through with this brain fog uh, that you can't even think clearly. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm just now, I know some few of you say, yeah, that's what's been wrong with you. Uh, I feel like I'm just now um, <clears throat> getting past some of that in some ways. But I spent 12 days in the hospital and uh, five days in ICU. And, uh, you know, at one point it was touch and go. And uh, they didn't know they didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, Jennifer was saying, you know, of course, the doctors told, okay, don't, don't preach your sermon. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes the doctors say, well, we're, you know, we're confident they're going to make it. She didn't hear that, at least not initially uh, from me. And, um, of course, she's facing it, you know, and, and full of faith, and my family was confident that God was going to bring us through. But you still have those thoughts go through your mind. What am I going to do, you know, in my 40s as, as if I'm a widow and you never expected to be there? And uh, so all, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's just some background. Um, the first thing that we want to touch on in this acronym of GIFT, and it's... It's not easy for us to see it that way. How I many of you know some things God allows to come? He works all things together for the good. And in the end, we see it as a gift, but we sure don't like the package it comes wrapped in. How I many of you know life's like that sometimes? We sure don't like the package it comes wrapped in. But one of the things that we have experienced through this gift is growth. And, uh, folks, God is concerned about our growth. And whatever happens in life that we come through being more like him and looking more like him. And you've got to understand some of the stuff that we've been through even this year. And of course, our granddaughter's with us today, and we love her, and there are good things happening there. And, uh, but it's, it's been a tough year, just like it has for a lot of you. And uh, we know there are stories all around this room, but we want you to come out of here with hope today. And, um, but we've gone... We've, we've had a lot of battles over the years, but we've never been through some of this physical stuff. And I know some of you had and medical. We'd, we'd never, you know, and, and, and then with me, at one point, they weren't sure if I was going to make it or not. And uh, we've never been through anything like that. We've had a lot of battles over the years, but we've never been through anything like that before. But what I've learned is that when we face things that we've never faced before, we get to know God in ways that we've never known him before. In fact, Peter says in the last verse of 2 Peter, he prays, 2 Peter 3.18, he prays that we will grow in the knowledge of Jesus. And as we face things that we've never faced before, we get to know him like we've never known him before. And some of that I'm still processing, but I'm growing. And... Um, 
And I'm thankful for, and I tell you one, it's not the only thing, but one of the biggest things, I'm not real proud of it, but it's the truth. I'd gotten out of alignment with some things and I was doing way too much striving and not enough resting in him. I'm just being honest. And I'm learning to rest in him. Uh, for, my, for my growth, uh, what I've thought about and prayed about, first thing I want to say is this. This morning and yesterday, you know, with, with, with Jordan, where he had to be put in the hospital and everything, and it was like, okay, here we go again. But I told, uh, I told a pastor this morning, I was back in his office, and I said, here's the deal. God has us now where we're going to walk through this with our kids, and I know Pastor Tim and Katrina are doing the same thing. But I said, Ellie, I know what she's feeling, and you know the fear that Jordan is feeling. So now we've got to turn this around on the devil and help them get through it. But as he said, for all of us in here, if I ask you, has 2020 been hard? Every one of you would raise your hand. For us, it's been a mixed bag. You know, 2020, and I told you all a few Sundays ago about the Lord speaking the word victory to me at the beginning of the year. Well, I don't think he spoke that if he wasn't going to bring a victory. So today, I'm declaring victory over every person in this church that's sick today or struggling or anything they're going through because God gave us that word. But today, what I got this morning when I woke up, and this goes back to the, and it's in your bulletin this morning. If you didn't get one, get one. Uh, It's a blog that Ellie wrote, and she can't be here today, and she's already texted me, and she's wanting to be here so bad, but she's uh, not here but she but she wrote something the devil didn't win or the devil doesn't win and she wrote that before the the time that he got so critical but he was sick but she wrote that the devil doesn't win and I just want to declare today and serve notice on hell and serve notice on the enemy you're not going to win this one you're not going to win and I told you a few Sundays ago there has never been a moment there has never been a second on the enemy's best day and I, I, on his best day that he could ever compare to the God we serve. We win. God wins. God wins every single time. So as I open up my part, I just say, devil, you're not going to win this one. You tried to stop us. You tried to keep us from it. But here we are. And we're still declaring the goodness of the Lord. And that's what I choose to do. But it's been a hard year. We know that. you know, And, we've, and you all have helped us pray for our grandbaby. And we're, you know, but it's, it's just amazing to to me how God had people that he was already having praying over the situation before Harlan ever came into the world. Now let me say, if I could get her up here and hold her and she'd behave herself, she'd be right here in my lap while we do this. But not that she's mean because that is not at all what I meant. I meant, you know, she likes to bounce around in things, but and then you wouldn't want to talk, listen to us if you could see her beautiful face. But anyway, we're so blessed. But all, ever since for almost 28 years, I've heard my husband say something and his sermons, if they ever come back to haunt you they always come back to haunt me but I've always heard my husband say something when you go through trials when you go through hard times you will get one of two things you will either get bitter or you will get better and at the beginning of the year I determined in my heart because I've not always done that because a lot of times I've been bitter and not better but I determined in my heart that I was going to get better and I was going to get better and not better I'm sorry And I can sit here today, and it's not anything of me, because if I could go back, it was a lot of hard days, and a lot of hard nights, and a lot of times of God speaking personally through His Word. But I can honestly sit here today, December 20th, 2020, and I can tell you that through the fire, through everything, that I'm closer to the Lord than I've ever been in my life. I'm closer to him because he has truly proven to me that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is, he, is, he is everything that I needed. He was my word when I needed it. He was my peace and he still is. But I can honestly tell you that I don't want to go back through 2020. But I thank God for the closeness that I feel. I thank God for the growth and the anointing that I have. And I wouldn't want to do it again. But I thank God that I made the conscious decision in my living room, in the corner, in my devotional and prayer place to get better and not bitter. Let me say this. During a lot of uh, the time, of course, there were times I I didn't even at the moment 
I'm processing now, but at the moment, I didn't know how sick I was. I didn't know everything that was going on. And uh, <clears throat> this woman has been the strength of our family through everything that we've been through. And um, we have come through this. We're closer than we've ever been. Um, you know, when you go, th- you never expect to go through something like that. And uh, when you go through something unexpected and you nearly died, could have died, um, what's important gets real, real quick. And uh, we're reminded, you know, we, we held on to God and we held on to each other. And, uh, you know, one of the hard things about this, and I don't want to engender any spirit of fear today because uh, there, there are people that, you know, fight the virus and it's a very mild case and thank God. And, uh, you know, but there, there's a few like me that, that it's not that way. And one of the hardest things is the family because with this quarantine business, she couldn't come and she couldn't be there. And, brother, that's hard. That's hard, and uh, as hard on her as on me, just in a different way. But God brings growth. Uh, are you ready to go to intercession? Um, listen, we will forever, of course, our, our hearts here, and this is family and long-term and all of that, but uh, if I know anything, there are some moments God deals with you in your life and gives you direction, and you know immediately and there are other times when you get this growing awareness as you walk through it, okay, this may be the will of God. I've had times when God directed us and I knew immediately. And then there were other times it was a growing awareness. When I came to Parkway, it was this growing awareness. Okay, we're stepping into the will of God. If I've ever known anything in my life, I know God sent me to Parkway Ministries. And... Um, this church prayed me through. And um, when things got bad, I got worse before I got better. And uh, I didn't have to go on a vent, but I went as high. I was taking as much oxygen as they could possibly give me at one point without going on a vent. And they thought, I, the doctors thought I was going on a vent. And one of the doctors said, told her, I think, said, uh, he's the worst case we've seen since this thing broke in March. And this came from a doctor that travels all over the country. This is not just a Corbin doctor. It's a special COVID doctor. From Johns Hopkins. Well, the, oh, yeah. okay. Go ahead. But, um, Sorry. It was a special COVID doctor. He goes everywhere. <clears throat> and he works with the infectious care disease yeah. or whatever that, you know, he works for them. And uh, when he took a turn for the worst, that's what he told me. He said, when I saw his x-rays, he said, I've been a lot, you know, he's been around. He said, but it's the worst case of COVID pneumonia and COVID on lungs I've ever seen. And they kept trying so hard for him not to go on the vent because they really felt like if they, if he had to get to that point that he would never come back. And, um. I couldn't tell him that every time I talked to him, he just kept saying, I want to come home. I want to come home. I'm ready to come home. I'm ready. And I was like, oh, honey. <laughs> and trying to keep him patient to come home was it took me and God and the Holy Ghost and everybody else to try to help him. But, but, uh, but he told me that. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of fear with that, just like he said. But um, it was. And uh, it, if you know this doctor, he, he was a straight shooter. And, uh, but he told me, he said, and I can, I, I'll never forget. And uh, he said, it's the worst that I've ever seen. And they didn't give me any promise of hope. So that's where we were. But intercession started. Yeah. Uh, and, let, and I'll come back to the intercession. But I feel like I need to touch this while I'm here. When I finally turned a corner, and I, I told you last Sunday it came up in my preaching. I, I hit a, you know... The doctors told her how, you know, okay, he's, he's, a, little, he, he's a little uptight, isn't he? 
Uh, and I thought, yeah, buddy, say what you want to, but I, I came here to get better. I ain't dying here. And uh, when I could finally figure out what we were after, we need those oxygen levels to come up. And once I turned the corner and, and, and kept getting better, I'm telling you, and there are a few in the room that are in the medical profession, and maybe there's a reason for this that I don't know. But when I finally turned the corner and got, got to where I could sit up in a chair and move at all, I don't know if they, you know, I couldn't go far because I'm hooked up to all this stuff. They wanted my oxygen levels to come up. And I don't know if they'd have wanted me to sing or not, but I didn't ask permission. I was in the room by myself, and so help me God, I would stand up out of my chair and sing every song I knew to the praise of God. And while I was singing, I could watch. I saw it over and over. I could watch my oxygen start coming up while I would, while I would worship and sing praise to the Lord. But when it was at the worst, and I didn't even know how bad it was, uh, they were afraid to tell me a lot, and uh, I'm not like most people. Uh, you know, I wanted to know some details because it doesn't depress me or make me want to give up. I know a lot of people, they're afraid it will. Brother, it makes me want to get up and fight. I'm, I'm getting up out of this with God's help. And uh, But when it got to worst, uh, some of our intercessors got together, and Pastor David and Carletta, uh, that some of you are getting to know a little bit, they work with the, the state prayer movement for the Church of God for Kentucky and do a conference call every week that I'm usually on. We pray together, have been for several years. On Thursday mornings at 6.30, I'm on a call with them, with pastors all over the state praying. So anyway, they used what they had, the call that they already had set up, and they got some of our intercessors on the line in a conference call, and they prayed together for an hour, and then they gave slots and people from this house were praying every assigned an hour and praying all through the night. And that's when it turned. That, so I'm not kidding when I say this church prayed me through. It was our people praying through the night when God came to fight the battle and turn things around. Um, when, and all of, and so many of y'all, you've been through so many traumatic things and Honestly, it's not, you know, you know when I say these things, you've been there, so you understand. But there was a battle of fear and faith going on. I mean, there really was. And um, on Friday, Sandy called me just to let me know, you know, what they were doing and what the prayer team was doing in this church. And, um, you know, and to get prayer strategies. What do we need to target? And I was constantly singing, sending targets, you know. And... Uh, but I, I said to her, and I, I'll never forget this. I was, it was one of those moments of fear. And I said to Sandy, I said, Sandy, is he going to make it? And she said, listen, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray. And she said, we're going to do everything we can in prayer to turn it around. And it was that kind of spirit that so many people got a hold of. And every night while he was in the hospital, I would, pr I would pray scripture over him. And I would listen to scripture. And my mom came and I put her down as a, she was part of the favor that God granted me that week by her being there. Because Emily was sick and Harlan was not feeling so good. And Jordan and Ellie were quarantined. And so it was just, it was just a rough time. And my mom had already had COVID. And so... To help my girls, because they were coming regardless. So to help my girls, my mom came. And my mom, we would pray every night before I'd go to my bed. But a few people, and Elsie being one of them, sent me Psalm 91. And every night, I'd take this Bible to bed. And I brought this one. This is really not my church Bible, but this is the Bible God used to speak to me and has used this whole year. And it's marked up and everything, but this is this is my word. This is this has been my life, and this has been what sustained me. But every night I'd pray Psalm ninety one over him, and I would intercede at my bed and uh, trust the Lord, and trust the Lord, and trust the Lord. But that Friday night, when they got to pray, and when you all, when this church was praying, and I know so many of you prayed and prayed and prayed, and 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 there was prayers around the world for Pastor Mark Heisel. We had people praying in Europe, and we didn't even know it. Last week, 
Yeah, can I jump on that? Yeah, go ahead. We, not only in the house, but and I know Facebook and stuff, yeah. but I mean, we're still getting calls of people. We were praying. For, we don't even know how they found out. Um, and from mission trips I've done, people around the world and people in Europe were praying for us. I had an evangelist call the other this, day. This I, past week. Yeah, I didn't even know how she knew or found. And not only that, but in this community, people that heard, and as I keep getting around town, apparently everybody in Corbin knew that the pastor at Parkway <laughs> had been sick. I don't know how they found out. but uh, And people that, and I'm not going to call names right, of streams right. of faith, but people that this kind of thing is not normally, yeah. spiritual warfare is yeah. not normally part of their vocabulary yeah. Yeah. in their stream of faith. And people that God would wake up and them getting up in the middle of the night to pray that, that had never done that before. And has it, never met us. Never don't met us, us. Don't go to a spirit-filled church. Had mm. never done that before in their life that God was waking up to pray in the middle of the night. I got a Facebook message from, I didn't know her name. I didn't even know who she was. And I had to grant, I guess, request to even get it. But I went to elementary school with this lady's husband. And somehow they got, they knew that. And she said, I just wanted you to know, you don't know who I am. And I think she works in the, you know, for a PBA or something in, in my hometown. But, but anyway, that's not important. She said, I just want you to know that our church, that I, we brought your husband's name and we've been praying for him in our services. We got prayer uh, notes from a church in London that I've never stepped foot in. Just people praying and praying. And I mean, it was a spirit of intercession that covered this. And that, that's the most astounding thing. And for me... For, my, for me, and I know so many of y'all prayed for me, but my daughters, if you all have ever heard Emily pray, she's an intercessor. And she could hear, I guess, because I tried to be strong, but she knew when I was getting really discour- you know, afraid or whatever, discouraged. And she would say, nuh-uh, dad's coming home. He's coming home. And I mean, she kept that strength in her. And Ellie did too. And Ellie said, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. And they prayed and they prayed. But you know what? Emily and Ellie have grown up in churches where intercession is, is, is at the front lines of what we believe. It, whatever happens, happens because of prayer. It happens in prayer first. And when we needed it, the spirit of intercession rose up in our daughters, and Emily was strength to me. And I know I'm, I've tried to be strength to her, but she was strength to me because they inter- were interceding for their dad. Well, and let me add something there. I don't know if it fits with this point or not, but I feel like I need to add it, and I know we've got to transition from intercession to favor. But one of the things that's occurred to me, you know, uh, Emily's been married a few years now, and, of course, we got our first grandbaby, and Ellie got married this year. And we were not perfect parents, but we did our best to put in everything that we could. And one of the things that occurred to me last night while we're sitting on the couch trying to, because, you know, I mean, Ellie, they've been married six months. and I mean, it, you know, it, as I said, it's hard and walking through some of that with her. But I was reminded we weren't perfect parents, but we tried to put in them everything we could. While we had them. And this year, Emily with the baby and Ellie and what they're walking through right now. This year, our daughters have had to face some things that we couldn't. They're on their own now and we couldn't fix it all. And now they've got to stand on their own. And know how to pray for themselves. And parents, that's why we encourage you. You better put everything you can in those kids. While you've got them. Because there's coming a time they're going to face stuff in life that you want mommy and daddy won't be able to bail them out of everything. And you better be sure that you take advantage to get all of God and all of the Holy Spirit in them that you can get in them. Because there's going to come a day that they've got to stand on their own two feet and fight hell and be a man or woman of God for themselves. Pardon me, you know I shift into preaching mode fairly easily. Are you still on the intercession? Are we ready to go to favor? I just want to say again, okay. thank you. Thank you for the prayers. Prayers and support, thank you for the support. meals and encouragement. Me- all I'll the- never, this side of heaven, 
But I pray, I pray that you all, you all just know how much we appreciate. And I pray you reap bountifully for what you did for us in the prayers. Uh, let's go to favor. Um, there were some things, um, you know, she asked where I wanted to go, and I said, take me to Corbin. And uh, like I said, they, they took good care of me. And, uh, after I got there, I discovered that the last eight years of, uh, and I still feel like that's a beginning in some ways, but the last eight years of building relationship and uh, all, I, I just, okay, there's more people around that I know than I thought there was. And uh, God specifically you reap what you sow, you know, and just trying to build those relationships and people all across town and all of that. And then God had people strategically placed to give us favor and help us in the middle of all of that. He did. I really didn't have any idea, you know, the people that were where, you know, I didn't, I didn't know all that, but that's where he wanted to go. And that's where we, that's where we ended up. But just a few things that I wrote down for favor. Um, one major thing that happened and, and, um, I've shared with some of you that we've talked one-on-one. But a major thing that happened, um, Mark didn't understand, and I don't think I did until I actually went up there. But the day that the doctor called me and told me, you know, that it was pretty bad, it was really bad. He didn't say pretty bad. It was really, really bad. He um, he said, you know, he didn't give me any hope. Um, and he, he, But he did say, you know, uh, and so I think the doctor and uh, maybe the patient advocate, I think that's her title, and they got together, and I think she told him, because she's known us, and I didn't even know really, you know, the connection. She there, where she worked. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that this yeah, particular lady there worked there, until. but anyway, uh, she said something to the effect, and I don't know, I'm not sure, but it was like, you know, you don't understand this couple. You know, this couple, it's Mark and Jen. It's not Mark or it's not Jennifer. It's Mark and Jen. They just go together. So what they, they called me uh, that on Thursday, and, was, and she was with the doctor, and they told me, you know, how critical he, how critical he was. And, uh, but she kept faith, and um, she believed for a miracle, and she, she was one of the people that got prayer rolling all over this country. But um, anyway, they told me, they said, we're not sure, but there's a possibility that we're going to bring you in the hospital and let you see him. And so, which nobody else well, had been, yep. one, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine. Uh, nobody, and they said, they said, this has not happened before. So, what they did, they brought me in a different, this is when he was in ICU, and he was in that, um, whatever, I can't remember now, but anyway, that sealed room, you know, with the, the oxygen, it has a name, and I'm sure these healthcare people know it, but I'm not going to butcher it, so I'm just going to roll on. But I went up on Friday, that was Friday morning of the Friday that y'all were going to start praying. And uh, I went up there, and they didn't take me through the normal entrance because that's the entrance where all the patients with vents are. And they didn't want me to see that. And I'm real thankful that they didn't. But I was allowed to come, and and I had this right here in my hand. When I went in to check in, I had this in my hand because I was on a mission. I was there to seem, but I was on a mission. And we talked, and... um, I was allowed 15 minutes. I never got close to him. We, I was outside the door, and we talked on our phone. And this is what they told me. They said he will either get better, this will either help him, or it will hurt him. And in your all's case, we think it might help him. So basically, I see that as, and maybe this wasn't, but this is how I see that. We don't have anything to lose at this point with him. You know, he's, he's, it's pretty bad. So they allowed me to go, and I got Psalm 91, Sister Elsie, and I declared that, and I read it over him. And uh, he was very weak that day, um, but, um, you know, that, that part was, was tough. He was very weak that day. I stayed about 20 minutes. They took me back out of the hospital, and I don't know. I, th- I really do think that visit may help them fight a little bit, for, you, know, for, you know, for family, you know. But then you've got the other side where it can go downhill because you're going to go and start jumping on to your loved one, you know, things they need to be doing or whatever. But for us, it worked. And for us, it was a God thing because everything turned at that point. And, uh, you know, we, did, we, didn't put a lo- we didn't put this stuff, you know, a lot of this out there or anything like that. But it was just stuff God was doing in us. You want to say something? Go ahead. Whatever you go ahead. 
Um, I'm going to hit something else on favor. So if you Go want ahead. To, I'll okay. come back. And another thing that I see now looking back where we had favor, the doctor that we he had when he went in, uh, uh, we had, you know, because every week the way they do it, there's seven days the doc, those COVID doctors are on seven days, and then another one comes in. Well, the one he had when he came in, um, and again, I'm not going to call names, but he was a, um, you know, he, he may not have been as much of a personable doctor, but we had favor because he told me this on the phone call on Thursday. He said, I've started your husband when he came in after I saw his lungs. I really think he's going to develop a blood clot or clots. And he said, so I went ahead and started him on high doses of blood thinner. I have him a bed saved and I see you because I knew he was headed there. So he was proactive in some things that I didn't know and he didn't see. None of us knew. But that doctor, I believe that God used that doctor to go ahead and be proactive. And on Friday, when I went to see him, before I left, they did let me know that there was a high possibility that he had developed blood clots. But when the doctor called me on Friday evening, it was blood clot. So that's thankful. Praise God. And it could have been worse had that doctor not been proactive. So I am very appreciative of the doctor. He was very knowledgeable in what he did. So I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, we're still believing for the blood clot that it's going to be. And I know he didn't bring us this far to leave us. And it's yeah, going to be okay. And some things, please understand, we, you know, we put out enough for people to pray. My wife will tell you when it comes to personal, I'm kind of private. And so we didn't share everything, but uh, we appreciate ongoing prayers. I'm doing fine. They're still treating me for some of that, and uh, we have every confidence that everything's going to be okay. But, um, it, you know, in so many, it, and listen, folks, we're, we're human. We're all human. And, and uh, you know, the other day I told you, I, you know, I'm coming back from COVID and then have this tooth go bad, and your first thought is, really, God? Uh, you know, and made it difficult to treat with blood thinners and all that, and we got that taken care of. But in so many things, uh, even little things, uh, Jennifer will tell you, she says, for the most part, I'm low maintenance. Uh, I, I don't require a lot. There's a line in Andy Griffith that says all he needs is a bed and a Bible, <laughs> and sometimes all I need is a bed and a Bible. But uh, I know people talk about how awful hospital food is, for the most part, I, I made, you know, I was fine. and uh, But I happened to make a statement to my nurse one day. She was a Baptist pastor's yes, wife. And God just did all kinds of stuff like that. But I happened to make a statement. I said, listen, I'm making it fine with the food, but this is the worst coffee I have ever tasted in my life. And then she's bringing me coffee, you know, stopping on her way into work to get me. So the, just just all kind of stuff like that. It That's was, the favor of the Lord. Um, it was, she, she called me on one of her checks to let me know how I was doing it. She said, and by the way, what kind of coffee does he like? I said, well, he likes hazelnut creamer, two Splendas, and coffee. And guess what? She did exactly what, what he liked. Shannon Mills, who couldn't be here today, she's, she texts me on Sunday morning. And he was in ICU yeah. and really probably, but she said, what does he want for McDonald's? What does he like? She's bringing him sausage biscuits and pumpkin pies and all kinds of stuff. So he had favor along the way. And when we go through the fire, when we go through the hard times, when you're a child of God, you get moments like that. Absolutely. You get favor in the midst of it. And the, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Amen. In fact, sometimes, and we're just trying to throw some nuggets in here along, but there are things that to somebody else may seem little, but it's, it's just a token of God's favor letting you know that I know where you are. And I care about you. And the last thing we want to touch, are you ready for that, is tomorrow. And because uh, there is a tomorrow. And as I shared with you last week, um, one of the things that, and I'm still trying to, because I didn't know how sick I was at the time. And a lot of things I'm still trying to get my mind around. And God is really just now beginning to speak to me about some things. But one of the things that we've both talked about. Because we know, and I do believe there's a spiritual dimension of this and spiritual attack and warfare. We know a lot of pastors who have died, uh, of a lot of pastors who have died. I had a good friend just below Knoxville that uh, didn't make it. And uh, so we've wrestled with the thing, God, why us? We're, we're no better than anybody else. And I'm completely awed and humbled, you know, that I would still be here and... 
and 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 we're no better than them. And I don't have a good answer for that, other than to say, we had a very strong conviction that God still had a purpose for me, and still had things for me to do. And that's the reason that I'm still here. And I believe that I'm no better than anybody else, but I believe God still has a purpose, and there is a tomorrow. Um, this is how the Lord sort of gave this to me. From the Sunday that I took him to the emergency room, the enemy started planting some seeds of doubt in me and some seeds of fear. Um, when I when we pulled up on the hill and I went to the emergency room, I opened the door, and at this point he was so weak that he couldn't hardly walk or get out of the vehicle. So I opened the door for him and I got it out. And when I was trying to help him get out of the vehicle, I looked over, and it was early on a Sunday morning, and there was a, a suburban, and there was a man and a woman, and they was putting a dead body, a body bag, in the back of that suburban. And it's like the enemy said to me, he's not going to make it. And I, that's going to be him. And, you know, and so I helped him get out, and I hugged him. And uh, I told him I loved him. And, the, you know, and they're coming to get him real quick, and, I didn't, you know, you know how it is. You can't go in with them, so I had to get back in the car. And when I got back in the car, the enemy said, "That's the last time you're going to see him." And I pulled off the hill, and I kept trying to think about, or I pulled to the parking spot, and I kept trying to think about what he had on, and that last hug, and that's what the enemy said. And he said, "You know, that's it. You're not going to see him again." But anyway, and we made it through, and then you know. On Friday, we told you they let us come up there. And when I was leaving, I wanted to meet his nurse. He had a, he had, and I hope how some, I hope somehow she can know this, and I'm sure Shannon will watch it and tell her. But he had a nurse for several days, and she's a great nurse, and they knew to put her in his room. And you know, she didn't leave him much, and I couldn't tell him there's a reason she's not leaving you, because they won't let her leave you. you she's got to be with you. But anyway, she was she was so precious to us. And uh, she was hard on him when he needed to be hard on, hard getting, you know, being hard on him. She needed that. He needed that. Get on your belly. Breathe. You know, she was one of those nurses, and she was, I told her, you're an angel. But anyway, I wanted to meet her because I knew she was taking care of him. And I turned around to leave Mark, and um, when I got to her, she was teared up in her eyes. And it's almost like what they weren't saying that you, you know what I'm saying? They weren't, and it's just you just knew. And uh, she was teared up. And I thought, okay, this is... And I turned around and looked at him before I walked off. And he took his hand and he did this. And as I walked out of that door, the enemy said, that's it. That's the last time, you know. So that was two times he told me this is the last time. So that was Friday. You all prayed Friday night. I felt so, you know, it was just, I knew. Sunday morning at, oh gosh, it was before six. My phone dings and... I, I had a message from someone that we've known years ago. It's a great person. But they was just wanting to check on him. But in the course of that, they went through the uh, about people that they had loved ones that had died with COVID. And, you know, and I mean, it was good intentions, but it sent me to a real bad place again. So I got up. I got my word. I got in my corner. And, and I say this to say... That's why it is so important because I did not feel like getting in the Word. I did not because I was having those scared moments again. And I was like, God, I thought, you know, we've, we, this is it. We've had a turnaround. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be better. And actually, the, the turnaround was actually, you know, the prayer came. That happened. And he started turning around on Monday morning big time. But anyway, I was like, God, you know. But that's the importance of daily Bible reading because I did not have any idea that when I went and sat down and got my devotion book in this Bible, that God was going to speak to my situation and let me completely know. But in my devotion, and my devotion was not about this, but my devotion that day was in Philippians 1. But this is what I read. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I, de- I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain 
And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. And that moment, at that moment, God let me know, Kay, he's going to be fine. And for him, heaven is much better than staying here. But you need him and Parkway needs him, so he's going to live. And at that point, I knew that I knew that I knew that he was going to live. It was settled in my heart. It was settled in my spirit. And my mom, who I couldn't have made it through, I could, as long as she lives or I live, I will never be able to repay her. God, she was my angel for that time. And I looked at her and I said, Mom, let me read you this. Let me read you what God just spoke to me. But I knew that I knew. And if for him, it didn't matter. He, it doesn't matter because he was going to get good either way. But I believe that God is not finished with Mark Heisel. He's got more work, work to do. And I kept saying, God, ever since I've been married to him, all I've heard is the great, a great awakening, a third great awakening, the last day's revival. And I said, God, I cannot believe that you're going to take him out. No, 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 no. He's going to be on the front lines of it. And I believe that. And I know that everything starts at the head. So that's a lot of the reason we're sharing today is because of that but at that moment it sealed in me he is going to live and not die and I talked to him the next day when he started making the turnaround and and he didn't even know any of this I hadn't told him anything but he was talking and he started talking about you that's who he was talking about and he said Jennifer you know that I've loved Parkway and he called himself and he said no I love Parkway Parkway. He caught himself and I said, see, he's even getting it. He's not going anywhere. God is not finished with him. God is not finished with Parkway. There are better days ahead. And he said, he told me, uh, Chris Mills called me and he went, listen, he can't go anywhere. We're not done. We've got a lot more to do. So I speak and I told him, I said, babe, there's a lot more addicts that need your counsel. They need to be free. There's a lot of lost people that need Jesus. We're not special. There's nothing about us special, but God, you've still got a purpose. And I praise you in the purpose and I thank you. And God, God knew I needed him and this church needed him, but God needs him for the last day outpouring that's coming. I believe that, Kay. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. But God used that scripture and spoke to me. Had I not gotten the word, God couldn't have spoke that to me. But that did it for me. That did it. I knew at that point, the next morning, he started coming off that oxygen. They had already prepared me for home health, that we would have oxygen in the home. He sent a picture to me and Emily and Ellie, and he's smiling big in that bed. He had shaved, no oxygen in his nose. He didn't have to come home with any oxygen oxygen. It's been a miracle what God has done. He is the gift of a miracle. Last night, Ellie was uh, saying, you know, mom, I'm, I'm just, you know, with Christmas and, you know, and I, <laughs> we sort of made a joke about it, but I looked at her and I said, no, 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 no. It does not matter. If we don't have Christmas when we normally have Christmas, that don't matter. I said, you see that man sitting in that recliner? That is my miracle. That is my Christmas gift. And I am so grateful to God if I don't eat one appetizer and if I don't get one gift. God gave me a miracle and let my husband make it. And I am so grateful. I am so grateful. Uh, as she said, and we're winding down here, this, this, this wasn't just about me. This was about our purpose and our destiny together. And I don't know what all God has, but God has a purpose over this house. And uh, let me share this real quick, and then we're going to get to your miracle because that's where we've been headed. Please understand my heart, and the only reason I tell this, like she said, Shannon couldn't be here today, but uh, Shannon's a nurse over there, and, and uh, most of you know Chris and Shannon, and, uh, you know, all the drug recovery stuff that we're connected to and, and all of that. And um, 
and their their history, and this isn't anything that they wouldn't say. And uh, but there was a a deal. She's a nurse over there, and there's a deal or two where um, Shannon went to bat for me to be sure that I got what she felt like I needed. And if you know Shannon, she was fairly insistent uh, about it. Tact is not her gift, and uh, she would tell you that. And uh, but she was talking to some. And, and sometimes you don't understand the impact that you make on life. And her and Chris and I have walked through some things together over the years. And uh, she told them the people at the hospital she was talking to. She said, and, "and and that's the only reason I tell this is just, and I'm not going into all the details, but." You don't always understand the impact you make, and I didn't. And the devil will lie to us and and tell you you haven't accomplished anything. But she told the others at the hospital, she said, no, you don't understand. This is my pastor. And she said, I wouldn't be here if, if, if it weren't for him. And, and some, what God did through him. And, and I don't, t- I may never tell that again. And the only reason I tell that is there are a whole lot more Shannons. And you don't know sometimes the difference that, that you make. Um, And we share all of that today to say that the miracle that you need, and I'm claiming victory in 2021. I don't care what 2020 looked like. I'm claiming victory in 2021. And, um, you know, your miracle, the nature of your miracle may not exactly be the same as ours, Uh, but if God moved for us, God will move for you, and whether it's healing or financial or there's a child that you're believing to see saved and their life turn around or hope in your life situation or whatever it is, Christmas is the season for miracles, and God is a miracle-working God. And I'm going to give this back to Jennifer, but we want you to get your box, okay? We hope that you're inspired by what God, to believe, by some things God, what God has done in our lives. And we want to challenge you to believe for your miracle. This is sort of the way God gave me this. And I know it's God because I tell people all the time, you know, I don't really come up with a lot of great ideas on my own. And one of the ones I have, it's totally God. But as we were, as we began to pray over this service, God just sort of dropped this in my heart. You know, what we've said today, hopefully, is a faith builder. And I don't think there's anybody in here that there's not something that you're believing God for. So inside your box, if you'll take your ribbon off, inside your box, there's a piece of paper. And it says, yeah, Pastor Tim, I'm sorry. The gift of a miracle that I'm believing God for is. Now, what we're going to do, we are whatever, and I I want you to, and I don't want us to do this just flippantly because what we're going to do, we're going to put this back in our box. We're going to tie that ribbon around it, and we're going to bring them up today, and we're going to put them on the altar, and you're going to leave them there today. And throughout the year 2021, these are going to be prayed over. And we are going to speak life and speak miracles. And and with you know with our I will I'm you know I'm going to you know with our intercess uh, inter, our prayer team maybe even I'm going to put these back in the prayer room. And then at special times when we do prayer, we're going to pull them out. We're not just doing them today. We're not going to forget about them. But I believe God let me know that He's going to answer some of these. He's going to answer these prayers this year because the whole the gift of a miracle. He led me to do this. That we're going to pray over them. We're going to fast over them. We're going to believe God for them. And when we get to this time next year, you're going to be amazed at the names, the situations that you wrote down. You're going to be like, yes, God, you did it.
You did it. So whatever your, whatever your request is for 2021, I want you to just write that down. And we're going we're gonna to write those down. Put it back in a box. Put your bow back on it. doesn't have to be a pretty ribbon, what, a p- pretty bow, whatever you want to do. But put that back on it. And as you finish, I'm going to ask you just to come up and just put them in different spaces in the altar.